Hey guys, welcome back to the Truck Insurance Channel. Daniel here. Thank you a lot for uh, everyone that's liked, subscribed, all that so far. Um, the next step, I guess, in, in getting hooked up with Amazon Relay is this application here. After you've applied for your authority, gotten your insurance in place, and gone active, uh, you can always check on that. Go into Safer uh, with FMCSA. Check your status. Uh, but yeah, so... FMCSA more than likely only requires you as with a box truck uh, $750,000 limits. So your insurance is at a million, but FMCSA only shows seven fifty. dollars That's perfectly okay. Don't worry about it. As long as your insurance actually has a million, you're going to be fine applying with Amazon. Uh, sometimes people start worrying about this, like why doesn't FMCSA show a million if I have it on my insurance? Well, FMCSA only asks if you have seven fifty. dollars They don't ask if you have a million. So when, you know, whoever you get insurance with puts whatever they, they request. So if the minimum required is $750, they are going to say $750. they are not going to be like, yeah, he's got $750 plus more. They don't do that. Uh, there might be some one-offs, but don't worry about it. It does, it does not matter for Amazon Relay. What matters is getting your information on this Amazon Relay application perfect and your insurance agent sending over a certificate of insurance very quickly after uh, you submit this uh, application to Amazon Relay. So registry monitoring services will send your agent a request for certificate of insurance right after you complete this application. All right, so just want to clear that up and follow along with, uh, with me here. Applying for Amazon Relay after you've gotten your authority active um, two things, make sure your authority is actually active, go on safer and type in your DOT number, pull that up, make sure it says active before you try and do this and maybe wait, um, a few hours if you're doing it like the morning of, maybe do it around lunchtime or in the afternoon. Normally it only takes a day to get approved. Um, it can take longer. Uh, I've have seen where people say, you know, wait five, 10 business days to do this, but man, that's, that's kind of crazy. As long as it's updating on Safer, it will update on Amazon as soon as their the data that they get updates. So like it updates on Safer with, with the FMCSA, and then that data goes out to different service providers, like for instance, Registry Monitoring Services, which is the company Amazon Relay uses uh, for ver verifying insurance and authority. So as long as that's all good, which I'll show you how, how to check all that too here in just a second. But um, we start off relay.amazon.com. Come up here to get started. Requirements, yep. We're gonna have the commercial general liability, auto liability, and cargo. As long as you don't have any employees, uh, W-2 employees, not talking about contractors, like 1099s. There are no such thing as 1099 employees. They're 1099 contractors and W-2 employees. As long as you don't have any W-2 employees, don't worry about workers' comp or employer liability, except in a few states in certain situations where you might have established your business where you're a W-2 employee, you might have to have workers' comp in that situation, but as long as you haven't done that, you just have an LLC and you're going to do like a Schedule C or whatever for your taxes, you know, if, if you're doing more than that, like if you're doing anything more than just a regular LLC and you're going to file on personal taxes, get with an accountant. Um, also, you can you know use uh, QuickBooks, link below for discount on that. You can even reach out to an accountant through QuickBooks and they can help you like make sure you've got everything right there. But for the most part, you're not going to need workers comp until you start hiring people and putting them on W-2s, which even then you probably wouldn't do until much later on, because most of the time you start hiring drivers, you're going to put them on as 1099 contractors. So anyways, let's only worry about these three, general liability, auto liability, and cargo. So we're going to create an Amazon account. Put in your DOT number and your MC number. I've seen where people have an issue with their MC because they find it somewhere where it has a zero on the front. Make sure your MC number matches what's on FMCSA or in Safer. Um, yeah, don't make sure these match up. Like DOT number, pretty simple. MC sometimes might have a zero in the front or something. Just make sure it uh, it's exactly what's on FMCSA or, or Safer. That way, 
you don't have any trouble with it verifying right here. T number and MC number correctly, it will verify and you'll get to move on to the next step. Your company name needs to match exactly as it shows from the FMCSA or SAFER, okay? Don't forget to capitalize anything. Don't leave off the ink, LLC, DBA, whatever. Make sure it matches perfectly. A lot of people have issues with getting approved from Amazon Relay because of this. I would also make sure the address matches what's on, re on Safer. Make sure all the information on Safer matches here, okay? Um, your domicile, separate thing. You can select the city you're closest to. You can select multiple. You can also do this once you're actually approved and update this. So, you know, some people say only select one. Some will say select all of them, whatever. Perfectly fine either way because you can update it at any time after you're approved. Keep it simple, though. Keeping it simple makes sure things go smoothly. FYI. Um, so we'll put all that info in and then continue. Next step is equipment inventory. If you've got one box truck, put one box truck. All right. You don't need to put anything extra. Doesn't need to be anything that you might have eventually one day because again this is just like your domiciles you can update this stuff as soon as you get approved just keep it simple so one box truck that's it insurance okay we just did our equipment next section insurance so right off the bat you've got these x's all right we need to drop down okay active insurance yes okay insurance company name this needs to be exactly as it shows up on your certificate of insurance or your binding paperwork, okay? Your agent should give you this. Here's an example of what a COI might look like, okay? So Progressive Southeastern Insurance Company. Just copy that, copy that real quick. And paste, all right? Um, real quick, back to that. So you might have multiple companies. You might only have one. And the way to read this is this is insurer A, okay, so company number or company A, all right, over here. This is all the companies you might have, all right. But in this scenario, this insured, this this trucking company only has one insurance company, and that's Progressive. And Southeastern Insurance Company, Progressive Southeastern Insurance Company is the like it's the company under the umbrella of Progressive. All right. This can vary by state, but either way, make sure this matches on here because this also shows up on your FMCSA data, all right? But anyways, so insurer, insurer A, all right? This letter matches over here, insurer letter A, A, A. So cargo, auto liability, commercial general liability, and you have a per occurrence amount, and then you have a general aggregate limit. So that's the each occurrence, 1 million, general aggregate, 2 million. Unfortunately, Amazon Relay makes this really complicated for people. They make it look like it's two separate policies. It's two components, two limits of the general of the general commercial general liability, okay? Which is completely different than your automobile liability. Um, for the most part, Progressive offers general liability in a lot of states. There's some that don't, like Texas, for instance, they don't do general liability. So you might have another company over here. Uh, or on the first, you know, however, whatever order they come in, but your general liability right here, it could be, you know, it will be a different policy number, okay? And that policy number has to go here, okay? And it needs to be exact, even like, for instance, there's a hyphen right here. Don't forget the hyphen. Make sure it matches up perfectly, okay? Um, anyways, and then so agent email address, that's your insurance agent's email address to receive certificates of insurance. So like me personally, I have one email for pretty much everything. So you'll know what email that is, all right? If your agency that you're dealing with has a COI email, you need to put that in here so that they get the COI request. Because as soon as you submit this uh, application, Amazon Relay is tied into registry monitoring services, which as soon as you submit this, Registry Monitoring Services is going to send an email to whatever email address you put here requesting a certificate of insurance to verify this insurance information you're putting in. All right, so make sure you have the right email there. And this phone number is the agent's phone number. So they're probably not going to call your agent. They're probably only gonna email. They might email several times if they don't get a response. Um, or if there's something wrong, they might email like one or two follow-ups. 
uh, you know, if something's not matching or the COI doesn't have the right coverage. But the biggest, most important thing is, or important things is the company name matches perfectly, the policy number matches perfectly, and the email address is an email address to your agent where they can receive a request for certificates of insurance. That's incredibly important, and your agent needs to be on the ball about this. Like this, as soon as you come down here and hit submit application, the, your agent or this email, whatever you put in here, is going to get the request for that COI, and then your agent agent needs to send that COI quickly, um, so there's no delays. Anyways, we're gonna do that for cargo, general liability aggregate, and general liability per occurrence. So this is this is one of those areas where you're gonna get confused. All right, so the aggregate and the per occurrence are the same thing. Oh, sorry, they're the same thing. So you put in the same policy number for this and this. So like in the scenario where you have one insurance company for all coverages, it's going to be the same policy number for every single one of these. But if for any reason you have general liability with company A and everything else with company B, you need to make sure that the general liability policy number here matches here and here. So general liability general liability aggregate. Okay. And then auto liability, this, every one of these is the same setup. You're going to type in the same policy number four times. If you have progressive for the, the three coverages. Okay. So even though there's four times, you got to put it in, it's just because general liability is split up into the per occurrence and the aggregate. I wish they just make that two, two like things. Cause as soon as they verify the policy, whatever they see it anyways, we'll continue. So, Account holder name needs to be the name on your bank account, then your nine digit routing number, and then your bank account number, okay? And make sure you put it in twice, just the account number, not the routing number. Routing number once, make sure it's right, account number twice, checking your savings, and then continue. Amazon Relay Terms of Service, you know, go ahead and read it. Read the whole thing, right? It's not that long. Sure. You agree, right? Yep. If you want to send a copy via email, you can send it to yourself. I have read and agreed to Amazon Relay Terms of Service. Continue. And now you're ready to submit your application. We're all green lights, okay? All right, good deal, good deal, good deal. And submit application. Status, pending review. Thank you for signing up for Amazon Relay. Your application under review. They say it takes two to four days. Most of the time I see this back in like 24 hours, um, 24 business hours. So like if you do it, Friday afternoon, you might not see it till Monday or Tuesday. Um, even though Amazon runs, you know, seven days a week, but, uh, yeah, expect it to take like at least 24 hours. Occasionally I've seen it come back same day if you're doing it pretty early in the morning, but most of the time it's going to be next day. And that is it. Thank you.